Hey everybody, welcome to Elseworlds Exchange, I'm Sal. And I'm Joel. Yeah, we're back. Welcome back, Joel. Oh, always happy to be back. Only a few episodes behind, uh, but yeah, I understand you've caught up. You've watched a couple of them. I have. I always like to keep up to date on who's replacing me for the day, you know, where it's like, ooh, you know, Ethan, Ethan brought his A game, so, you know, I really got to try and bring my game, and ooh, that Jason is just so charming. What can I do to outdo that? It's true, yeah, no, Ethan really knocked it out of the park. I hope some of you watched it. Uh, we really get into it. People got really mad at that episode, which is... Oh, did they? <laughs> I guess means it's a good show. Uh, yeah. uh, we also had some great people, like um, we had we Josh Williamson on the show. So cool. Um, we had, um, what was it? Uh, we had Ethan on the show, and we had Jason Inman. I understand you just had Jason on the comic multiverse not too long. I indeed I did. Talked about his new book. We talked about Zevia and everything. It was a great time. Yeah, yeah, Zevia. <laughs> Talked all about he he needed a new drink and he didn't want to take the Lacroix plunge and I'm like man let me tell you about Zevia let me convert you to the Church of Zevia. I shouldn't go on the Lacroix binge because Lacroix is probably going to be gone in the next couple of months. Oh really? Yeah, Lacroix is in trouble big time. Oh. It turns out like uh, it's easy to make flavored seltzer, mm. and so Coke and Pepsi bought like two other like rival. Like, no name, no nothing. Right. Companies, and they're like, oh, we'll just sell it for less than a dollar. Like, oh, we'll just sell it for a dollar less. And LaCroix's have, like, oh, shit. <laughs> have you seen that stuff, Bubbly? Because that very much struck me as like, oh, it's no name brand uh, LaCroix. Okay. No, I have not. But I'm hey. sure, yeah, but I'm certain that's that's the case. If you see Bubbly, that's what it is. Nice. Um, what was the other thing I saw about LaCroix? Oh, the, the LaCroix CEO like had a complete meltdown. Uh oh. Yeah, he said something insane. Like, brand management was that of taking care of a disabled child. Ooh, that kind gets of, a yikes for me. Yeah, just totally imploded as a person. You really, and and that of course like really helped out the shareholders. They were really happy <laughs> to see that he was like, oh god, oh, the guy is in charge of our company that's having a problem is falling apart. Like, cool, great. The the soda wars, man. They claim another casualty. <laughs> they do indeed. <laughs> uh, before we jump in, I wanted to say this show is a collaborative effort between myself and Caped Joel, another great channel. Uh, but not only that, but from you as well. You guys who watch the show live using the Super Chats allow us to keep roofs over our heads and whatnot. It's really, really helpful. Uh, so we encourage you to do it. And so, uh, as such, if you do decide to use the Super Chat, we'll answer your question or make your comment known here on the show. Uh, and, yeah, that's it. And we'll try to make it uh, weave it organically into the show, though. It's not going to be, like, straight-up interruption. It's, you know, we're, so if we don't get to you right away, don't worry. We will get to you eventually. Uh, it's our commitment to quality. That's right. Speaking of which, we also wanted to mention that because uh, this, because Joel and I can't shut up, uh, if you ever <laughs> want more, which I can't imagine you do, you would, but if you do, uh, you should go to YouTube, or you should go to uh, patreon.com slash comic pop to get a side show where Joel and I talk even more about stuff called One Shots. It's a one shot deal, just a little, uh, little one off, if you will. Uh, so, but it's an exclusive podcast that's only on the Patreon. Uh, so if you check it out, maybe you'll see some rewards that that you like or you might want to check out. If it seems right for you, I encourage you to check it out and give it a try. And we talk about anything and everything on there. We all sorts of topics that you wouldn't even consider. It's yeah. quite a fun time and definitely, definitely worth your Patreon dollars. I think so. I mean, you definitely we we go way off of the like uh, the, the the algorithm, you know, path. We're like, oh, this won't this won't help. But let's talk mm -hmm. about it anyway, because yep. it's just on Patreon. It's just, yep. just for you. Um, right away, Adam Asamoah helping us out three times and then says All-Star Batman and Robin was a book that was canceled. Uh, I, You know what? I will have to hold you to that, my friend. <laughs> it's not canceled. They just didn't finish it. <laughs> It's not canceled so much as it's dead. <laughs> yeah, it's dead. Like, here's the thing. Uh, Daredevil Target, also not canceled. Just never going to finish. Uh, Hickman, Hickman Shield, same deal. Exactly. It's just stuff that couldn't get, like, uh, uh, Doomsday Clock. Is it canceled? No, no, no. It'll eventually come out. But, like, if it didn't, it wouldn't be because of any reason. It's just because the creators can't finish the damn thing. So, like, yeah. trust me, uh, All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, also known as, I, I think they changed the name before they realized they were never going to get another issue out. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, don't don't worry. Don't, that was not canceled. Don't blame the editors on that one. Uh, blame Miller not being able to finish the script and, and Lee not being able to finish uh, the drawings. That was all that it was. Because that book sold like gangbusters. 
Indeed. J Time and the Geeksmith helping us out. Thank you very much, J Time and the Geeksmith. Sounds like a band. Mm -hmm. uh, and Radical Radish Super Sons cancellation was a stab to my heart. <laughs> yeah. 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 D is that on your list, Joel? I know you have a you've like a, you've cooked up a, a pretty snazzy list for this. Whole Thank you. I do. You know, it's funny. I probably should have put Super Sons on there, but Super Sons is kind of this weird thing where it's like, yes, it was canceled, but then they instantly got a mini series, which was clearly just what Tomasi was going to be writing anyway. And I wouldn't be surprised if when this mini series is done. They fire up another miniseries. That's fair. Yeah. Although I can't believe that Damien and John have had this many adventures before John went off with his grandpa. I know. But you know what? Like, whatever. I mean, the fact is, like, they could, the second that Bendis is done with Superman, they could literally be like, okay, well, and he, oh, no doubt what's happening to me. I'm yep. 10. The, the canonicity, too, of those adventures of the Super Sons, literally in issue one, Tomasi's like, this is how he spent his summer. But Bender said, this is how he spent it. Yeah, I don't care, though. This is what I was going to do anyway. Yeah, so you know, who, you know who else doesn't care about what I'm doing? Anyone else. So I'm Ever. not going to care about what he's doing. Screw well, you. Watch as I reference year one and year two multiple times. Oh, my God. Yeah. That, I love that. Though. no fury like a Tomasi scorned. So, um... You know, it's funny, there's a lot of books that I read as a kid or that I read in my teens that I was like, this is pretty great, and then it just died. Mm. Um, but there weren't too many that I, like, that, that that were canceled out from under me. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. it wasn't like I was reading Aztec and I was really <laughs> enjoying it, and then all of a sudden they pulled the rug out from under me. Like, most of the time I was, like, checking things out, and then I stopped reading it. Jessica Jones, for example. Mm. It was a fine series. Bendis, when he and uh, and everybody like Mac and 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 Maliv were working on it back in the day, the first series loved it, and that got to finish. Then yes, they made another series. Eh, like I dropped off very quickly into that series, and then it was canceled. Yeah, and it's like, was it really, or am I just like for me, it just ended. I just stopped reading it, but like apparently it was canceled, and I know it it hit a lot of people. But, uh, that's a thing. That's a thing in comics. Once you know, once once the rumor of cancellation, once the word of cancellation is out there, it's very easy for people just to drop off and stop reading completely. I know a lot of people stopped reading Green Arrow there by the end when they kept changing in the fill-in artists and writers, and then they're like, "Well, this is probably going to get canceled soon." And indeed, it got canceled soon, two volumes later. Yeah, it, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, actually, or at least it becomes one when, like, you you pick up a book that you know is not destined for like one longevity but you want to read it anyway but you also know you have to like kind of prioritize and so when you choose not to buy it you're contributing to its inevitable cancellation anyway it's kind of hard uh to, to and a uniquely that. uniquely comic thing too you don't see that in movies and television no absolutely not uh, uh, ironically i think that the marvel shows suffered from the exact same situation you could definitely make that argument now that you say it. I mean, I once people started from. getting the the inkling that they weren't connected, that they weren't even related, that people didn't care, that the, that they were there was no support from the movie side. I think a lot of people fell off. I think once uh, some noticeable quality dipped in terms of writing for a lot of people, not me. I don't. I, I don't think much much of the quality dipped at all across the board. Except but, for Iron Fist. Yeah, but except for Iron Fist, but that was that was rough from the get go. I didn't have yeah. any. You know, I knew what I was watching by the end of it. <laughs> if um, anything, it improved in season two, not by much. Yeah, but. well, getting rid of Iron Fist helps. <laughs> yeah, but boy, did it ever! Apparently, to fix that show, you just had to get rid of the main guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but that being said, you know, uh, when this when the second or third seasons of those shows started to come out, you know, you hear about the numbers dropping in biblical proportions and you're like, oh, like, I guess I'm not going to watch it. You know, seeing with Jessica Jones uh, ending very soon is going to be the last one. I think it airs this month. We will have to do a postmortem on the Marvel Netflix universe. I think let's table that for a future episode. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that conversation. Um but yeah, but great points, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm really glad you brought up Super Sons at least. Uh, Pricey8040 says, sorry it's off topic, uh, but you. But what do you think about the Avengers game? Looks cool. I'm excited. I think it looks terrible. But look, Really? Yeah, I think it looks like it, it came out four years ago. Uh, and like, I, I will, I'll, I'll withhold judgment on Cap's costume and stuff because I feel right. like costume customization is huge. 
Oh god, yeah. I mean, so, it, it's like, just like Spider Man and Injustice. People had bugs up their asses about that till it's like, no, but you can change it though. Yeah, and that's fine. And uh, I, I don't know. I the presentation sucked. So like, I'll say that. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, all right, I'm ready. And what I saw, I was like, what the? What are you? What are you doing? It, it was no Spider-Man. It was no Spider-Man reveal, that's for sure. But let me ask you this. Are you more excited for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3? Have you been keeping up with that? I have. I actually watched the trailer for that right afterwards, and I was like, yeah, I'm more excited for that. I mean, like, <laughs> everybody loves Marvel Ultimate Alliance, so, like, I get it. Also, no, like, it's not... They were working on Avengers for Square in 2017, yeah, it's been in development for a really long time. And you can tell it's been in development for a long time because Terrigen Generator. Yeah, I, I'll bet you you'll ne- you won't see nary a mutant in sight. Mm-hmm. That's too bad. Like, that hurts. That is a shame. Also, I'm 90% sure the young girl talking in the trailer has to be Miss Marvel Kamala Khan. Absolutely. Uh, there was some theory about that when they had that first teaser trailer with the young lady talking and people were like maybe it's captain marvel maybe it's ms marvel uh ah. now it's like oh a terrigen bomb engine yeah mm-hmm. no it's definitely a well, whole new generation of new humans yeah no totally it i'm i'm cautiously optimistic uh i love the the fact there's no loot boxes and you don't pay to win and, and the free that's updates. nice it's a great idea that's so, really good. I, I know a lot of people were scared off just when they said, you know, oh, it's going to be like an online service because that's a very, very dirty word now in gaming post Anthem and Fallout 76 and everything. D- 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 don't tell me it's a service. Tell me it's a game. Yes. When they were like, you can play co-op. Uh, I was like, ooh, online. Oh. Mm. Couch- I-, I hate that couch co-op is dead. I think the last great couch co-op game was the last re-release of Borderlands that you could play with a friend split screen. Oh yeah, that's fair. Uh, Heartless Fang says, glad to see you guys again have some money. Also would be cool Aww. to see you guys discuss their most recent Doomsday Clock. Well, I agree. Uh, if you can't hold, hold out for that, definitely catch this week's Off the Rack. Tiff and I talk about it for like half an hour. Check it out. Solid. It's, uh, I think we both loved the issue, just the short version No question. Of it. Yeah. Uh, Amartya Archer, uh, Acharya? Sorry. Bless you. Uh, last I read, Lee was pretty committed to finishing All Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, which sounded very weird. Agreed, but like, yeah, Lee, you know, he's happy to draw. I mean, like, listen, people are saying like that some that might have been some of his best art in his like career was All Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder. So like, I don't blame you, or I don't blame him anyway. Uh, Kane's World mentions Mr. and Mrs. X and X Men Red. Mr. And Mrs. X, I don't think it was canceled. I think it just ended. Because the X-Men books are in a constant state of flux. Even now, they don't know what they're doing. They're like, okay, this is our last reboot. We promise we're going to keep with this. Oh, Hickman wants to come right? And we'll fuck everything out. I'll throw it all away. Everyone's fired. Uh, I hope Kelly Thompson gets to keep it going. I hope they keep the, the Gamba Rogue thing going. Mr. Ms. X is a great book. Uh, and X-Men Red, I didn't read because I wasn't because I heard Hickman was on the horizon. And I'm like, no. Same. It's just hard to get involved with anything X Men. I hope Matthew and Rosenberg gets to keep writing Havoc because I think he wrote my favorite version of Havoc in the last couple of years. Fair enough. Uh, Luke Verillo. Hey guys, great to actually catch the live show. Did you see Dark Phoenix yet? Thoughts? Would love a full review. Joel, did you no, see it? no, I, I did not. No, I'm not gonna spend my money on that. I'm good. No, uh, I no. I'll see it eventually. I, I remember Tiffany was like, "What? We're gonna watch that?" I'm like, "Maybe at a matinee <laughs> on a Sunday. Like we could catch it." That's uh, yeah. I, I'm about the same too, you know. Like if I do, if I don't have to pay full price for it, and if I ain't got shit to do, I might see it. You don't need my review. Like you know, you know what your opinion is already. Yeah. Uh, Michael Kajanski Kuz- helping us out. Mr. Roboto says, "Joel, you're back. I knew they couldn't keep you down." No, they can't. I get knocked down, but I get up again. That's Chumbawamba. Right. <laughs> Joel, the Chumbawamba of podcasts, or the tub pumping. Oh. Oh man, put put that on my business card, please. Right. <laughs> and Hardy34, hey guys, I was going to ask you a question, but I just got a call while I was at my station. <laughs> well, fair enough. Uh, y'all are the best in the world. Long live Comic Pop and Cape Joel. Hey. I agree with you, Hardy. Thank you very much. And sorry you got the call. I hope everything's going well. Keep up the good work, man. Uh, and uh, Mr. Roboto, need to get Superior Spider Man suit back on Peter. Nah. Doc's, Doc Ox got it. You're good. He's rocking it. I was going to say Superior Spider-Man was a, was an inexplicably canceled book. Yeah, but it's it back. like 
it, it is. It's funny because like it ran its course. It had its story with a beginning, middle, and end, and I was quite pleasant, or I was quite happily, uh, you know, with the conclusion. Right. Then it's like, oh, but they're going to bring them back, right? Because this is way too good an idea just to let you know die on the vine, and they did years after the fact. The, when when they were looking at the numbers and they were taking in the fan reaction to Superior Spider-Man, that like by issue five, six, tw- like ten, they should have been like, "Oh shit! Like this is its own thing." Okay, Slot gets to do whatever he wants. Peter's gonna be Spider-Man again, but we're gonna keep the book Superior Spider-Man alive, issue twenty-five. Like we're gonna keep the book going. We have all these clone bodies. Like yeah, it would be amazing if. They had done that when they canceled Scarlet Spider. Yeah. When they were, if, if Ox like, okay, Peter, I, you know, I've learned my lesson. I'm sorry. And then he just Golden Octobots Kane and becomes the Superior Spider-Man over there. Like, I don't know. I mean, I don't listen. That would have been very unsatisfying. I would have been very upset with that. But at, at the very least, then you get to keep what you did and keep the sales going. I mean, that's just and, a business perspective. And keep the momentum going too. Yes. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, I think it's super cool that Christos Gage gets to write a superior Spider-Man book because I like him. I like Ock. But at the same time, I'm like, ooh, I would have liked this way more if you pulled the trigger on this a couple years ago. Yeah. There's not – like, as YouTubers, we can ourselves tell you, like, how important it is to, like, keep the momentum going, as you said. Oh, like, yeah. We did a – when we did our live show, I had this idea where we were like – because I've seen it done in other live shows where it's like – Okay, so when you need to take a break, you need to move things around, throw up a title screen, and come back in a minute. We lost half the viewers, and we never really got them all back. I guarantee you, if you had, like, if you had amazing Spider-Man numbers on Superior Spider-Man, and that book kept going, you were going to keep most of those numbers. You also got to have an anti-hero Spider-Man, which is something they've fumbled with a lot in the past. But, like, no, here's an actual anti-heroic Spider-Man that people like and want to read about. Well, and how many people were reading Amazing afterwards who were like, this is cool, I guess, but I was kind of really enjoying Ock as Spider-Man. It gave you a good ending is the thing. It's like, well, this is a good chance to get off now. Right. But how about if you just gave them their hero and let them keep going? There's no shortage of Spider-People. It's dumb. Now more than ever. Uh, so yeah, uh, we brought up a couple of books. I guess I got to throw this one out there. It might be on your list too. Scarlet Spider from Chris Yost. Oh yeah, see, I never really got into that one, but I know it has a quite a big cult following. It was a good book. I was digging it, and it was a great way to take some of the Spider-Man runoff. You know, like mm. all that the other crap. Uh, I was more than happy to see it go on Kane as opposed to Peter, because I'm like, Peter, keep him as a pure product. Make him Spider-Man. Let him do the Spider-Man stuff. But like for all the other Spider-Man crap that, like, either doesn't work or is unsatisfying to be on this character that needs to be kind of, like, the same for a long time, mm-hmm. throw it on the other guy! And it was it was working really well. The suit looked great. The character was fun. It did. A lot of redemption to go through. He was, uh, well, not him, but his spiritual brother, Ben Riley was on the New Warriors back in the day. Stick him on the New <laughs> Warriors. You got... Two, they did. And and so you had the... You could have had the main book with, with, with Scarlet and the... And the New Warriors book with him, too? I don't know. It's just, it's too bad to see that that book didn't survive. That book was in Houston, too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. That's that's interesting. I like when they move Spider-Man to other cities, like Doc Ock is in San Francisco now. Yeah, no, it's a good idea. Uh, Give him a new, fresh perspective. I love it. So, uh, that was a a book that, when they canceled, I was like, it's it's a bad idea, bad mojo. But uh, what else you got? Uh, I got one here, and this is a funny one because I never thought this was a book I would fall in love with. This this is one from the year of our Lord, uh, 2013 is what this book is from, and it's uh, Fearless Defenders by Cullen Bunn. I feel a lot of people already forgot about this one. Absolutely. I mean, so much Defenders got canceled or Boy, did forgotten they. about. Uh, was that – and I don't even know if Fearless Defenders was supposed to be like a mini series or not. No, it was meant to be a whole series. I'll tell you all about it. So oh, I please. pulled this book for review back when I worked over at Name Redacted, and no one else wanted this book at Name Redacted, so they gave it to me. And I'm like, I don't really want to read this. It was the all-girl team yes. of uh, Defenders. It was led by Misty Knight, Valkyrie, Elsa Bloodstone, Danny Moonstar, and I think there was a, like a couple new characters yeah, that Valkyrie. Bun invented. Did you see Valkyrie already? But the, yeah, they were on there. Yes. Yeah. In, in fact, this this is the book that tells the story 
story that only Aaron and well, uh, Bun again, because Bun is writing as Guardians of the Galaxy, so he actually got to build on what he did here. Right. Where it's like, oh, uh, you know, Valkyrie fell in love with a human archaeologist, but then the archaeologist died, so like she took her soul into her body, and now they're like time sharing a body. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, that's fun. And they're like, oh, you know, we were really enjoying our relationship, but this is like the definition of moving too fast. You moved into my body. Right. Yeah. Like, that's the other secret weapon of this book. It was funny. It was really funny. Like, Cullen Bunn, I don't think he gets to write comedy that much anymore, but goddamn was this book hilarious. This had, like, laugh-out-loud text gags. Wow, nice. I just wrote it off. I didn't even think about Fearless Defenders. But I will say, many like, people did. I loved the idea of an all-female Marvel team. You have so many great female Marvel characters that don't get enough play. Uh, I remember as a kid growing up thinking that the Avengers had a lot of women on the team. Mm -hmm. And I was just wrong. They didn't. <laughs> but it was more like there are a lot of female Marvel characters and a lot of female Avengers. Indeed. And I just assumed they were Avengers at the same time. But no. Uh, but Fearless Defenders, good idea. Very much. I can still remember this book ended on like a deeply unsatisfying uh, cliffhanger where it's like, oh, you know, the big mystery villain. I think it ran for like two volumes. The big mystery villain is revealed. And it's like, oh, it's Morgan Le Fay. Hey, one of the greatest villainesses from uh, what is it from literature is now the villain of this book. And I'm like, oh, isn't that fun? Yeah. And she's a good villain. She's a good Marvel villain character as well. She underused, you know, underused. She used to sleep with Dr. Doom. It's a that's a good use of that character. Um, and a great, like, oh, no, that was the character the whole time? That's fun. Yeah, and the story was just never resolved. But thankfully, it's kind of getting resolved now because Bun gets to write Valkyrie again and gets to pick up on that story that no one bothered to pick up on for yeah, years. Yeah, I wouldn't spend too much time getting excited about Valkyrie since she's not going to be the same Valkyrie. Not going to be the same Valkyrie anymore. We're getting Jane Foster Valkyrie for the future. But all right, I mean, I'm going to read that too. It's Jason Aaron and Al Ewing, and he says it's going to be his last word on Thor. So all right. Yeah, exactly. No, you got a point there. Fearless Defenders, good call. Newer books. Because the books that I was thinking of like older are pretty much older books, although I did just mention Scarlet Spider and uh, Jessica Jones and stuff like that. But most of mine are newer, actually. I think all these books here are ones that I read professionally and not ones that got canceled when I was just a regular fan. I'll, I'll bet Hawkeye's on your list. Hawkeye? No, actually, because the Hawkeye, I felt, actually had a pretty organic conclusion. Are we talking about the Fraction one or are we talking the Lemire run that happened next? I'm talking about the Lemire run. Oh, see, I didn't love the Lemire run as much. You think I would. I would, and I, yeah. And I can't guarantee – there were some interesting ideas. I like he made it about his brother. I like he juxtaposed it with flashbacks to, you know, them growing up with a sword master in the circus. But no, yeah. that one that, – that, I didn't fall in love with that one the same way I fell in love with the Fraction one or his Green Arrow run that preceded it. Right, yeah, well. <laughs> I remember picking up the first, like, couple of issues of the Lemire run and being impressed. Like, I kind of mm. dug it. It was very artsy. It was hard for me to get – too into it for too long um i think the covers were kind of the best part of that run they were and also just you know too too close to the fraction stuff yes is what it is yeah yeah, yeah. you had this like superior amazing run for hawkeye and then they're like well let's let's try to ape off of that a little longer yeah, like you can understand why everyone, I'm sure, thought that that would be a slam dunk home run. Hey, it's the dude who made Green Arrow great again over at uh, DC. Surely he'll do the same here at Marvel with Hawkeye. Yeah, they, he shoots arrows. That's the same thing. Yeah, apparently not. No, not so much. But, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, well, then I guess I'll mention another book that I kind of dug. Uh, we haven't really gotten a chance to talk about it. It's the cover's sake, but like Gwenpool. Did Gwynpool get canceled? Because I feel like it ran for a very long time. It did run for a while. I th I believe it was canceled. Like, I believe that, like, while they were able to kind of tell their story, mm -hmm. and it when it did, and it was a great story, I feel like if it had sold well enough, it would have kept going. Huh. Like, I think it that's a cancellation. Isn't it coming back soon? Isn't it getting, like, a mini very soon? Yeah, minis minis are not a resurrection for me. Mm. Minis are like, well, you can tell your one arc because either I owe you a favor or you can, like, do whatever. Like, you know what I mean? I just feel like I, I don't consider it to be a resurrection. Right. And I did consider Gwenpool to be a, an official cancellation as opposed to, like, a... Like, well, you told your... I mean, the reality is anytime an editor walks into your office and is like, well, I think you've told your story. <laughs> You know, as opposed to the, the the creators being like, I said everything I need to say about this character. Like, I'm good. Right, right. Like, I don't think so. 
I feel like I missed the ship on Gwenpool quite a lot because I remember when issue one came out and I was talking to you and Benny about it. I'm like, oh, this is, I'm like, oh, this is kind of funny and a little self-aware. Oh, I dig this. And you're like, really, Joel, Gwenpool? And then I'm like, okay, fine. Then P- you peer pressured me. I guess I won't keep reading it. Only to find out later that you guys had been keeping up with it and loving it from issue two onward. And I'm the one who missed out. Yeah, no, it was a great book. Uh, <laughs> I, I was, I couldn't ignore the guri hero art mm. and when i found out how like when i noticed how close you know what it was i was just avoiding number one and then when i finally read it i was like it's a great book like literally i read issue one i'm like oh it's great i think we yeah. reviewed it all off the rack and i was like this is good yeah funny self-aware yeah v- v- very was- meta but in a different type of meta that i appreciated because the deadpool book had gotten less and less meta yeah under Duggan became more of like a straight up superhero story so I like they took that fourth wall breaking stuff and gave that to Gwenpool yeah well the other thing was like it it looked derivative it was from a cover idea and it was like I I, one issue isn't enough to sway me to believe it's gonna be great you know what I mean like it was like I'm like this is clever how many issues is this book gonna get and are they clever enough to actually do something with this character how many did it get? Didn't it run for like over 50? I think so. I think it got like, oh, I got two volumes. Which is pretty damn impressive, I all agree. things considered. No, yeah, like th- those who worked on it should be very proud. <laughs> uh, Hastings uh, was really, really like, well, he's smart. He's a smart, funny author. So it's, yeah, yeah. I, I noticed a common thread both in the ones that you just mentioned and basically the majority of the ones here on my list. Oh, yeah. Co- comedy. Right. Comic book comedies do not have long short lives or no, a shelf don't. lives, which is a tragedy. Well, because you're basically asking – I mean like the, look at movies. A comedy film, unless it's an, it's an Apatow movie, mm. 90 minutes – because you don't really have yeah. a lot of time, you know. You know, no one wants to dwell on humor for that long. You know, any comedy special, an hour. Yeah. You know, at at most, everyone talks about their tight five five minutes. That's all we have time for. Humor, uh, the like, so people don't like to dwell in humor for too long. I guess not. When was the last time a comedy was ever nominated for best film? Mm, uh, you know, a, a, an outright comedy, not just like a movie that was like a comedy of errors or like a or, comedy or that's funny sad. stuff happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but like the other thing about it is I think that it's just subjective. Like, absolutely. It, it, you have to hit the, the same audience with the same humor and rope in new people. Yeah, it's a tough, tough dance to do, especially in comics, because hearing a joke and reading a joke are two totally different things. Absolutely. Now, if, if, if you're doing a pure humor book, you're probably not going to make it past, like, 13 issues, maybe more. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're, like, <laughs> unless unless you also have, like, pool in your name. <laughs> unless you have pool in your name. <laughs> yeah. um, what about that Spider-Man Deadpool book? Did that get canceled, or did that just stop? I want to say that one ended, or I want to say that one's still going. See, I, ne- I never wrap caught- up. I, know, I just read the last issue. Okay, so I guess they did. Yeah, I, I again, that was another boat I missed because I'm like, no, I got my uh, Duggan Deadpool over here that I've been reading for five years. I, I'm tapped out on Deadpool. I need no more. Every Even though you and everyone else is like, no, this Spider-Man Deadpool book is amazing and stayed amazing through so many different uh, Marvel relaunches. Yes, although I will say I don't think it ever really recovered after Joe Kelly left the book. Mm, yeah. Um, Got to jump into the Super Chats again and uh, answer some questions slash comments. KT83976 <laughs> says, I don't know if I'm sad or glad that X20, X23 was canceled. Was it canceled? I thought it was still going. I thought they were relaunching X23. I know that, like, the Wolverine Laura Kinney book was canceled. Right. Then she got a new X23 book, and the first arc was all about her and clones and everything. Yes, exactly. Well, no, because it, it had to have kept going, because I know people were upset online because they changed Honey Badger's name to Scout. Oh, they did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that has to be new, so it has to still be going. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I know it's a 2018 series as opposed to 2019. So like, it, it, I think it's still going, but we're, I'm happy to be corrected. Uh, Matt Shirley says, hey, guys, long-time listener, first-time Super Chatter. My favorites are Super Sons and, of course, Tomasi Superman. It does feel like it was kind of canceled. 
ended abruptly. There's again, I've got one or two on here where it's like, well, was it canceled or just ended abruptly for other things? I have one series on here that got uh, what is it, New Fifty Two out of existence. Yeah, well, a few people got suffered from that. Indeed, uh, but yeah, no, I, I. I I don't want to officially say Superman was canceled, but it certainly feels that way. Totally mm-hmm. different direction, totally new creation, creative team. Everything was different except for the numbering. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Iceman 10, 14, 18. Two books that I miss a lot. Hopeless, Hopeless's Young Jean Grey solo book. Mm, yeah, read. a lot of people love that. And uh, the amazing Rosenberg Kingpin short series. Yeah. Uh, first time watching live. Y'all are the tops. Thanks, for, thanks a lot, Iceman. Tiffany loved the Kingpin book. Me too. Me, me and Tiffany back when we did a comic show together. Yeah, we both showered that one with praise. That one was weird too because it was only supposed to be a mini, but it also ended early and it's clear they rushed the ending. Yes. So like, yeah, no, it was supposed to end later on. They clearly were like, nope, doesn't sales don't justify it. Wrap it up. That was when they were going all in on Daredevil. It's like Electra's getting a new mini, Bullseye's getting a new mini, Kingpin's getting a new mini. Yep. If there's one upside to it, again, because Rosenberg went to, what is it, to go write Punisher, and his Punisher, this newest arc, is him actually going to be coming back to New York to fight the Kingpin. I'm very excited to read that arc, because I'm really hoping he revisits some of his Kingpin stuff in that book. I feel like there's no way he will avoid it. Most most writers who got like kicked off a book, if they're given a chance to talk about that character, or even some other character, they'll they'll rope them in in some way. Oh, yeah. Hopeless was sad about his Spider-Woman book, wrote a Doctor Strange book, was like, hey, guess who the supporting character is going to be in my run? Absolutely. So I'm definitely excited to check that out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Eat That Horse says, uh, broke my heart when Brian Miller's Batgirl ended. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of people who are still torn up about that one. Yeah. I didn't read it, so I hear what you're saying, but I'm sorry. Uh, Michael Kazjanski says, uh, can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm very disappointed they canceled the recent West Coast Avengers from Kelly Thompson. Oh, is that already done? Is that already over? See, I didn't hear that either, but like when I read the first issue, I was like, this book's getting canceled. I mean, no West Coast Avengers team lasts forever. They're basically saying, hey, you're the silver medal Avengers right. is who you are. Uh, that, But that said, like, good idea. And as much as I didn't, here's the thing. Like when I reviewed the first issue, I was like, this ain't for me. But that doesn't mean it wasn't for somebody. Absolutely. The, the fans who liked it liked it a lot. And, hey, if you liked Kelly Thompson's uh, Kate Bishop Hawkeye series, well, this continues into that. So Yeah. Well, And the other thing is they use a lot of characters I enjoy mm-hmm. or that you would be excited to use. Quentin Quire shows up. I mean, Gwen yes, he does. in that book. It's a, it looks like it was canceled. So, yeah. Ah. Uh, but, I mean, that's that's not her fault or the character's fault. That's just the curse of West Coast Avengers. Yeah. It, well, and the market. Like, it's just, I don't think the market can support this many books overall, much less the books that are being published by Marvel. We're falling back into too many Avengers where it's like, okay, you got your Avengers and you got your Savage Avengers and your West Coast Avengers and this new Strike Force book, which is really just an Avengers book, but we're not calling it an Avengers yeah, book. Savage Avengers and also Savage Avengers. I mean, Strike Force. Like, what? <sighs> Whatever. I really like Tina Howard, though. Her Thanos book is good, and she had the best one shot in that Guardians annual that came out this week. Oh, nice. It was all about Adam Warlock, and it was like a real deep science fiction story. Cool. I dug it. Um, yeah. So where, where did he go? Uh, Sam Anderson, do you like the idea or concept of Rebirth that got canceled? Yeah, <laughs> Rebirth was an event. was like more like a publishing initiative that, got, that, that, that was canceled. I'd say Rebirth got canceled, certainly. <laughs> well, was it canceled or slowly poisoned over time? Yeah, I think, well, Rebirth never really had a chance. No. Because, like, Rebirth is about um, change, and if you have entrenched management, you can't have change. Yeah. So, you know, read into that as you will. What a what a shame. Yeah. Uh, and Labyrinth is a question for Comic Pop. Uh, off topic, I'm, t- I'm hoping you guys will get to Ultimate Spider-Man Clone Saga on back issues. That'd be awesome. Yeah, the plan is to get to all of them. That's only Volume 10. We're on Volume 4 or 5 or 6, I think. So we're, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Uh, and also Phil Garnhart helping us out. Al- and uh, yeah, so thank you very much, Phil. Thanks, uh, Phil. Joel, what other books have been canceled that break your heart to see it to see them gone? 
So here's another one that got a bit of a conclusion, but not really. Uh, and that was Dan Abnett's Hercules series from 2015. Huh. <laughs> Is that the one not, uh, oh, from 2015. Okay, so that, yes. wasn't, that wasn't when Hercules like took over Hulk. No, that got canceled too, though. So you can also put that there. Hercules is a grand tradition of getting canceled. Exactly. Yeah. Hercules is a character that I always ignored and marginalized because I'm like, well, who cares? Like, he's. I don't like his myths. I'm not a fan of the character. I think he's also like a. He's he's hard to pin down as to whether he's good or not. Although the Avengers mm. Hercules has always been like objectively interesting and like trying to be good. That's the one you get here. Basically, this is Dan Abnett being like, okay, what if we do superhero Rocky, where Hercules is like, I, I used to be good. I used to be a contender. I was the greatest hero of all time. Yes. And now and now I'm a schlub living in a dirty apartment in New York, and, and drunken Gilgamesh is crashing on my couch, so at least I'm doing better than him. Yeah. And he redesigned his costume and everything, and he started having, like, high-tech guns and everything. Uh -huh. And it was really funny and really slick, and, like, Abnett created these new villains called the new gods who are like gods of plastic surgery <laughs> and social media and the social media god looked just like max landis like literally oh that's funny it was very funny and again i think that's what killed it's like nope this is too smart too funny too meta no one knew what to make of it is this the series that established that hercules was like a recovering alcoholic yes that's awesome good use yes, of that character is. good use of that good good dis direction for that character I think this got finished later because Abnett got to do a tie-in book. I forget what event it was, if it was like Civil War II. It was something like that. And he's like, okay, so for my tie-in, I'm just going to write another volume of Hercules. Is everyone okay with this? Okay, cool. I'm going to do that. Is then. anybody looking? Cool. I'm in. That's literally what it was. I didn't get to finish the book, but I'm going to finish it here. Yeah, that's funny. Good idea. Um, Man, you know, we don't really talk about this, but like, did you see how like Max Landis is – so screwed again. Yes, yes, I did. I did see that. I uh, I was I was um, tweeting about uh, event Leviathan, mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, oh, is that is this hashtag tweet like trending? Uh, no, but uh, Maxer was. And yes, I was he like, was. What? What? Oh, oh, and I'm like, oh, Max is trending. I wonder if it's good news. <laughs> it's never good news. And I checked, and no. And I'm like. Well, I guess we won't be talking about American Alien anytime soon. Oops. Or I mean, ever. We, or ever, or wrestling isn't wrestling. I mean, you, you and I are in the unique position that we had it from, like, good sources, from people who work in Hollywood. It's like, no, 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 we, we've worked for him on sets and everything, and yeah, he's a, he's a dick cheese. Yeah, well, I, I've had two different camps. I've known people who knew him from childhood, who, like, mm. who care about him, and I've known people who have worked with him in recent years. This and is true. So, it's tough. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna endorse that guy. No, no, not worth dying on that hill. And also, what was the last thing he wrote? Bright, you're only as good as the last thing you wrote, kid. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. And Bright uh, sucks, so there. Oof. What a, what a, yeah, whoa. It sucked and you're a dick, apparently, yeah, so there oh, you go. Damn. Um, but that was, I was like, that just came out of nowhere. I'm like, didn't he go? No. Mm -mm. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't even know if it was canceled. I, this is a book that, like, like I didn't bring up, like, the, the Female Blade book because it wasn't even like it was a book. Oh, yeah, that one. That was Tim Seeley's big thing where it's like, hey, I wrote Hack and Slash for you. I know he, uh, horror. I know young female protagonists there. I can't wait to sink my teeth into this one. Vampire pun unintended. Uh -huh. and, and then everyone was just like, no, 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 no. We we don't like the idea of this. We don't like the idea that there's a white guy writing this. And basically, they shouted the comic down and it just never came out, which I think only goes to show that Marvel didn't have much faith in it to begin with, that they could literally be shouted down into not releasing it. And it's funny. I've even seen attitudes shift to where a bunch of the people who shouted it down, you know, you know, pr prominent, you know, uh, nerds of color and everything have come out and said, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't have done that because just because he started that book doesn't mean that an actual person of color couldn't have picked it up down the line and ran with it. There's a lot of great characters that were invented by white people. People, you know, only to have their stories told through actual people of color later on in life. Uh, right. Riri is a good example of that right now. That's true. 
Uh, but that reminded me of how, like, I remember Chelsea Kane was supposed to make a Vision continuation. That's right. That just never happened. That died. Like that. That was that was murdered in its sleep. That that didn't even get a chance. Like there was like I don't even think there was even art, and it was just like no. I think there was one promo image. Yeah, I remember. I remember seeing that, and I was like, oh, they're making they're doing more Vision. Makes sense. I wonder why it took so long. And then it just no. Which again, that that's an example of Marvel listening to all the wrong people on the internet and refusing <laughs> to let that book come out. I'm like, well, that really sucks because for all we know, we could have been deprived something great. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, like, I know that it made sense to do that. Uh, Asher Colvin says, I know the Ultimate Universe imprint from Marvel had its ups and downs. Do you think it was canceled too soon before Secret Wars should have come back? Um, no, I think Ultimate Universe is a time of its uh, it's a product of its time. I think it's dead. I think it was dead long before they decided to like smash it into the earth. <laughs> you you say it's dead, but in the solicitations for the new Miles uh, Spider Man book, Solid in Amid says he's bringing back the Ultimate Green Goblin. Yeah, no, they're bringing back. I mean, I I think they brought they brought back the Ultimate Universe. I'm just saying, conceptually, oh, and, okay. and and literarily, like it's dead. There's nothing the Ultimate Universe can do now that it hasn't already done before better. Mm. I, That's I don't true. think there's a place for it anymore. And I also think it was just nice and symmetrical, too, because it's like, hey, started with Spider-Man, ended with Spider-Man. Yeah, well, it, it's just that universe was the place where you could do anything. And then they were, like, afraid of their own, like, five-year continuity. Mm -hmm. And now Marvel's a place where you could just do anything anyway, and who cares? That's true. And if you like the ultimate ideas and you like that stuff... Uh, watch the movies because that's where most of those ideas went. True. Well, and the Ultimate Universe, like, it, there's no anything they could do. Like, it, the, they tur they turn Cap into a Hydra agent. You yep. know that if they had pitched that in 2006, they would have been like, eh, you know what? Stick that over in the Ultimate Universe. See how it plays. Yeah. <laughs> like, but now it's like, do it anywhere. I don't give a shit. Like, whatever. Yeah, it's all good. There's just no place for it anymore. Uh, mm. Will I am Golden was Batman Inc. canceled? No, nah, I think. I, I think uh, that's that's Morrison. Anything yeah. by Morrison, except for Aztec. Uh, when he's know, done, he's done. When he's done, he stops. Like, that's the end of it. Yeah. Uh, Joshua Wright, all new Wolverine, mostly because I hate how they brought back Logan and took the name away from Laura. Yeah. It sucks. I, she looks better in that yellow costume than he does. Sure does. I wish I wish they could have kept Tom Taylor doing stuff, too. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think that's the saddest thing. As soon as he was gone, it's like, well, he's the guy who was the most passionate about this. It's so weird to let people who care and want to write the book go and replace him with somebody who's just a staffer. Yeah. So bizarre. Uh, he, he also said uh, A-Force's cancellation. A-Force, that was another one. It's like, man, you had G. Willow Wilson on board, that one, for the first arc at least. And that was another one where as soon as Wilson was gone, I'm like, well, I guess I'm not going to keep reading this then. Yeah, but then that results in its cancellation. I don't know how it was after that. It's it's very weird. Again, you're like I was following the book because I'm like, yo, I freaking love Miss Marvel. I cannot wait to see, you know, what this writer has in her next. Yeah, that's true. I read that first arc and then it's like, oh, she's not coming back for a second. Like, oh, I guess I don't care what happens then. <laughs> Uh, sp speaking of books, uh, here's here's two. Actually, it's a book that was canceled twice. Actually, okay, is the thing. Uh, what well, well, one is a little uh, debatable because again, it, it's more like it got forced to wrap up because of uh, the new Fifty Two, and that Secret Six that was canceled oh, once God. in two thousand eight, and then again in twenty eleven. Yeah, I should have known you were going to mention Secret Six. <laughs> of, of course you did. Here's the thing. The ending itself is fine for the 2008 series, but so clearly not the ending that Simone wanted to do. They basically go out like a Western movie. They all uh, get hopped up on Venom and just attack the cops and the superheroes, and it's implied most, if not all of them, died except for Bane, but it didn't matter because the whole universe was getting rebooted next week anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So well, at least they got to go out like not punks. <laughs> no, the Secret Six is a great idea. Mm -hmm. And a good use of all of those characters. And especially for me and for you, I think, as well. Like, the use of Bane. Yeah. And the direction of that character is better than anything they've done. Anything they've done with Bane. Especially in the last two to five years. Oh, oh God, yeah. And then she brought it back again in 2011 with a new lineup of characters. Only Catman was the same. They had new costumes and new status quo. She brought back the Dibneys in this, and then no one fucking used the Dibneys after this. 
so weird. And then, you know, we did a second arc that was actually about Strix, who was the uh, Court of Owls assassin that she created for Batgirl, right. who, who who was kind of like a Cassandra Kane, who, you know, was like really sweet, uh, you know, had a really sweet disposition, but a really dark backstory and was, you know, uh, differently abled. And Lady Shiva was in it. She even started bringing back characters from the original Secret Six, like Scandal and Ragdoll and everything. But the book was done and I don't. It just, I, I guess the fan base just wasn't there and as hungry as I was for it in 2011. Yeah, it's it's really sad to find out that, like, you are one of, like, a very small margin of people who want something that it costs a lot of money to produce. I, I guess so. And again, too, it was funny and it was offbeat. And, you know, uh, m- maybe that's another reason that I guess just comedy and offbeat stuff just does not have a long shelf life. No, it's just a little it was, it was a little too esoteric for everybody, I think. I guess so, clearly. But, uh, hey, stands up. I, I liked what Lashley was doing on art in the first arc. I think that might have what turned people off, too, because, you know, original Secret Six was, like, really colorful. Yeah. But, but Lashley drew the first arc, and, you know, his is, like, very dark and brooding and foreboding and everything. Right, 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 right. And very, like, kind of scratchy and everything. I think maybe that turned people off, where they're like, hey, this isn't the Secret Six I remember. No, that's true. That's true. Uh, what was your second book? Or is it the, that's it? That was the book that was... Uh- I, I I've got like four more. Oh, I know. I thought you said like there were there were two books that. Oh no no! I, got I say it got by U52. it got canceled twice. Once in twenty or two thousand eight, and again in twenty eleven. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Well, what else we got? What uh, what other things we have that's uh, that break your heart? I mean, like, I guess I could bring up. Um, I was sad to see uh, Young Justice go back in mm-hmm. the day. Way the back first in the time. Day. The first yeah. time. Yeah. At its height, really. Yeah, exactly. Like it was weird that they were like, ah, screw these. T- these guys, um, and now they're back, and I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm done with Bendis's Young Justice. Once I got the questions of why Spoiler wasn't here, what happened to Tim, and what happened to Connor, I'm like, okay, I got the answers. They're fine, I guess, but not interesting enough for me to keep reading. I'm done with this, and I was already done with Titans because Adam Glass has turned it into Suicide Squad Junior. Yeah. I don't want to read about any of the young heroes here, and I can't even read about the Super Sons for much longer. <laughs> no. I guess that's because no one at DC is young. That's another thing. Comedy and books about young people. Exactly. It's weird. They, they're they obsessed with young people. You know, and they're yes. Obsessed with, they're, they're, I want you to buy our books, and, I, and I'm writing about them, and like it's, it's nothing but teenage sidekicks, and yet I don't want to cater to you. Speaking of comedy and young people, here's a book that was both and one from the now, I think we can admit, disastrous DCU era. Oh, no. This I'm talking about Prez by Mark Russell in 2015. Wow. Yeah, was that can- – I didn't realize that was officially canceled. I thought it was just like that it stopped. But Man, Let me tell you, it was supposed to be a mini. Yeah, it was exactly. A bu- That's why it I, was, was, I remember it being billed as a mini and being like, okay, I guess just end it. It was supposed to be a six issue mini. I think it only got four issues. Oh, that's that. Be, that being said, man, are those issues fucking hilarious and you know really good, solid political satire from a dude who is a professional satirist. And yeah. boy, in some ways, this book was goddamn prophetic. For those who don't know, Prez. 2015 is a sequel to the original Prez from the 70s where the idea is what if a flash in the pan viral video star got elected president because, you know, in this dark dystopian future, we vote for presidents the same way we vote for American Idol. Yes. And anyone can do it. And it's like, haha, that's hilarious. But also like, oh, what if we elected someone who didn't owe anyone any favors and who was actually like dedicated to changing the world for the better? And what's everything that, you know, she would fight against in doing so? And in fact, she even gets a mentor in the original Prez guy from the 70s. That's so brilliant. It was. It was super brilliant. Uh, we get a whole B story about like a super high tech governmental attack drone that's forced with guarding the border who realizes this sucks. I'm sentient now. I don't want to be a drone anymore. <laughs> and like the drone is dealing with its emotions and everything. I'm like, man, this this really should have been like a movie or a cartoon miniseries or something like this is like too good to be a DCU comic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is what it was. And it just ended. The last word we got on this, Prez, is remember during the last election, there was a Catwoman election night special for yeah, some I fucking that. reason. Yeah. The backup was a Prez story. Huh. 
And that's the last word that was ever written on Prez to be a backup in a Catwoman special tying into an election. That's heartbreaking. <laughs> Boy, was it ever. But <laughs> Mark Russell bounced back. He wrote that Flintstones book that I didn't enjoy but had a very long run. Yes, I remember writing off the entire Anna Barbera line, but Flintstones, I was like, no. That one hung in there. Uh, He wrote a Lone Ranger book just this year that was actually really, really solid if you like westerns. And uh, Wonder Twins. My other co-host, Matt, tells me Wonder Twins is fucking hilarious. And that's actually going from being a six issue to a 12 issue now. Yeah, I heard the same thing. I heard Wonder Twins was... was, Well, I remember, like, there was no buzz about wonder twins because why would there be because why would there be but like but bendis was like spearheading the whole thing the whole thing so it's like you know that's where the that's where any momentum for it came from and then over time like over the last like i think a few weeks i've heard how good or how much people are enjoying it i shouldn't say it's yeah. good i should say people aren't really enjoying it i mean i i wish again and this is a problem with marketing why didn't they tell us it was a comedy? Oh, because as we've realized, comedies don't have good shelf lives, so now great, hilarious books aren't even being sold as being funny anymore. No, no, no. I mean, probably smart, actually. <laughs> as we have seen here for all these books that were canceled because they were too funny. <laughs> yeah, or at the very least because they were like, how do you sell a comedy? And that's that's true. Like, the, the they can't sell them in movie theaters. Like, I don't know how no. to sell a comedy. I, I, it's funny, maybe, unless you don't have a sense of humor. Yeah, unless you're Judd Apatow. Where's Where's comics Judd Apatow? Right? I don't know. I'm sure I could think of that if I if I was given more time or if I cared more. I I like this is kind of also becoming you know the state of comedy comics too, and why they can never seem to make it. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, another one I had was Power Man and Iron Fist from David F. Walker from Aww. not too long. I remember when that book was launched, and I remember being like, that's not going to make it. That's all of David F. Walker's books, where it's like, man, this is fun and cool with a great art style that pays great reference to continuity in the first arc. Then in the second arc, he brings in this big idea where it's like, hey, remember the Runaways? Well, what if Alex came to Harlem and recruited a bunch of uh, Luke Cage villains to become the new Pride? Oh, wow. I'm like, this is great. Why is no one marketing this? Why is no one talking about it? You know what it was? Again, I'm sure this book got greenlit because of the Netflix shows. And once those started underperforming, they're like, well, we're not going to bother, you know, giving you promotion time. No. Oh, no. No. This. Yeah. This book even also had one of the only good Civil War II tie-ins because Walker, being a smart dude, being a well-read dude, made it an entire story about uh, police profiling in the superhero world. Oh. I remember that being a thing in the original Secret or Civil War. Mm. I think they did it through Bishop's eyes that time. Ah, right. So, smart. Good use of those characters. And then, like, right after this book, David F. Walker got a Luke Cage series that also only lasted two volumes. That's right, yeah. Hey, two volumes! That ain't bad for most of these books. No, that's true. I mean, you know, hey, you you could put those on your shelf. And again, that book... Filled with smart ideas, too. Luke Cage goes to a creepy mansion in Louisiana where the doctor who made him is having his will read. And he runs into a bunch of other, like, you know, uh, experiments like himself. And it's all it's all very get out and it's all very creepy and, you know, very cool. Again, only lasted two volumes. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is just a sad I know. This is satire. <laughs> I, I, I got two more here. Uh, the Dot Green era of Hulk under Jerry Duggan, that oh, one yeah. got ended by Secret Wars. Mm-hmm. Where it's like we were building up to this thing where it's like, oh, you know, this darker, more malevolent personality in the Hulk is going around depowering all other gamma creatures so he can be the only one. And the final holdout is She-Hulk, but the entire superhero community rallies behind She-Hulk in the final issue. And then it's just done. Right. Yeah. Also, too, you know, Immortal Hulk is great, and Immortal Hulk is playing with a lot of the same ideas, where it's like, what if this really evil Hulk took over? And then I love it. It's like, oh, you like it when Ewing does it, but you didn't give Duggan the time of day when he was doing it. (laughs) (laughs) And the fact that it's like, I think I'm the only one even clamoring for a conclusion to this story. I'm like, but how did it end, though? Secret Wars happened, and then Amadeus Cho was Hulk. (laughs) Right. What happened to Doc Green? Actually, Immortal Hulk is referencing Doc Green now. You know... Ewing knows how to do that. I wouldn't worry. <laughs> no, I, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I have to worry because literally Bruce Banner's going through like a Rolodex of his personalities. Exactly. Okay, 
We got Joe Fixit. We got Devil Hulk. We got the big guy. Oh, Doc Green. Yeah, I kind of remember him. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll just, call the, I'll just call Duggan and ask him what he was doing with it. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, I really want that. Especially because Duggan seek to imply that uh, Doc Green was actually the larval stages of the maestro. Ooh, good idea. Because near the end of that, like, Meister is looking at himself in the mirror because he, like, shaved, like, a whole mohawk into his head. He's like, I should grow a beard. Oh, no. Like, several times, I think I should grow a beard. And then, like, he has these dreams of the future where he's got, like, a bunch of skulls around him. And he only has five o'clock shadow and he's just beating the Avengers to death. Oh, my God. And I'm like, we almost got that story, didn't we? We almost got the – oh, yeah, D- Doc Green is actually the maestro is That's what he so actually cool. holds. What a great I idea. Know. That we never saw to fruition. But we might see an Immortal Hulk, though, because, again, in the last issue, I don't know if you read it, Banner's thinking of names for personalities, and he almost spits out the maestro. <laughs> oh, nice. He almost spits it out. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, all these things, they're, you know, a maestro, and then Abomination attacks, so he doesn't oh, get it out, but that's clearly where he was going. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, all-new Ghost Rider from Felipe Smith, another one I quite enjoyed. That's, oh, I uh, know, yes. Still hold me and him, me and Felipe Smith are the last two people holding a torch for this character. Yeah, yeah. Every time that he shows up in anything else, you're like, boo, that's not how his powers work. That's not how that character is. That wasn't that wasn't what I was sold on. Again, it's so funny. Yes, his book was canceled, but he's arguably more popular now than he's been because he's an Avenger, because he was on Agents of Shield, and he's going to be getting his own show soon. Yeah. No, I I remember reading the first issue for off the rack uh, mm. in the store. And I was like, there's no way this book's going to make it like, and it, and it didn't, but boy, was it visually pleasing? Wasn't it? It was, it was very interesting looking, but that wasn't enough for me. You know, I was like, I don't care. Like uh, a ghost, a ghost rider with legitimate pathos is actually like a great idea. Yeah. And yet, because he's not, really a ghost rider like that bothered mm-hmm. me because i'm like oh god we're getting when we have ev- this is catch all over again when we eventually discover that it's like yeah okay you don't you're not really a spirit of vengeance it's your evil uncle eli morrow that is giving you these powers which again felipe smith never really got to explain how or why shield wrote its own version and now like jason aaron is kind of going off that but also kind of ignoring it and just doing his own thing now oh yeah no you're right it, it feels like the look and Robbie Reyes as a character took off, but nothing else from the actual story took off. That sounds to me like nobody read it. Like it's true because that's what it, like, people are like. Oh yeah, he looks really cool, and oh yeah, I like the idea of having a, like you know a Hispanic Ghost Rider. That's cool. With some, I saw his brothers in a wheelchair. That's kind of sad. Like that's all they've mm-hmm. got. Yep, they just like we, it's like we looked at the pictures, and that was enough. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's like no, but Felipe Smith was actually trying to say something about East LA and everything and about this character and oh, a I young don't care about that. Moving on. <laughs> young person with responsibility. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> oh. No. Cool uh, tattoo man, fast and the furious, but ghost rider. I mean that's a that's a pitch and a half. It's hey, just too bad it, that it's also like creatively bankrupt. At least he did better than the young Hispanic version of Vigilante that DC tried to pitch around the same time, who was also from L.A., I'm pretty sure. Vigilante is just a terrible idea. So, like, you know, don't do that regardless. Unless he's the cowboy country music singing version of Vigilante. (laughs) Yeah, I guess. And even then, that's a comedy pitch. Why do we not have a six-issue comedy pitch with Vigilante? I'll sing country music by day and fight crime with my guitar. (laughs) Taylor Pester says, one of my favorite books, Checkmate, got canceled. Uh, Checkmate. Again, cool concept that they keep burying. Yeah. Craig Recker got to finish his run, but they put Bruce Jones on for a final arc as a sacrificial lamb. Yeah, and then we didn't hear about Checkmate forever and ever, and then we got the Justice League versus Suicide Squad story. Like, no, 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 Checkmate existed. Then they stopped mentioning Checkmate again, and now Bendis is mentioning Checkmate, but Bendis clearly knows that nothing has been happening with Checkmate, so he's just writing Checkmate like he remembers Checkmate before. That's how Bendis works. Yeah. Uh, Tevia Smolka says, uh, my favorite series, Spider-Girl, was canceled. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yes, about seven times. Uh, Yes, talk about a book that has the most consecutive cancellations. Yeah, especially if you count, like, all the other books that took place in her universe. Yeah, they're going to cancel that book. Listen, you got a lot more Spider-Girl than I ever would have imagined. It's true. Her her legacy lives on. Yes. 
Charles Burroughs helping us out. Thank you very much, Charles. Hey. Radical Radish off topic. But one of them I thought was going to be canceled was the Tomasi Batman and Robin run after Damien died. So glad it was allowed oh, yeah. to conclude. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's a full topic, but that's fun. Like, saved at the zero hour or like, you know, almost got the axe book. For real. And now uh, his Batman and Robin book gets to continue under the guise of Detective Comics. Exactly. Mr. Roboto, isn't Jean Grey redundant as we have better telepaths? Uh, I guess. Nobody really said that, but like, I hear what you're saying. Um, she's got the history, though. She's got the history. She's stronger than most, and uh, there's something about her that lets the Phoenix Force show up every time. So, like, you know, it's her and Emma for the most part. That's how Those I always look at it. Uh, also, Inhuman Forever, but not really. Fair <laughs> enough. John Madden. Wow, we got John Madden in here. I love your video games. Uh, great well, topic. well, well, you see. <laughs> great topic. I'll never not be sad that the Loveness Perez Nova series from a few years back got canceled. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, Matt, Nova, of all the new young heroes, Miles, Kamal, everything else, it's crazy to think he was the one that got the axe, but not right away. No. They're like, okay, they're like, okay, we're going to fuse the book. It's going to be Sam, but we're going to give people Richard Ryder back so you get the best of both worlds. Little did they know that actually offended everybody because new young fans like, I don't fucking know who this Richard Ryder guy is. Get the hell out of here. I want to read about Sam. And, you know, Richard Ryder fans are just loud, and there's not actually as many as you think they are so guess what they didn't buy that book in numbers either and the book just died yep <laughs> yeah and now he's not even a nova no well he's getting his helmet back that's the new champions arc we're in okay, right now cool. he's gonna try and steal his helmet back he's teamed up with one of his villains to go steal his helmet back Good. Uh, i like that yeah taylor pester new 52 earth 2 was great then after tom taylor left and future's end was around the corner you knew it wouldn't stand a chance I'm shocked that book managed to stay alive as long as it did because they clearly kept blowing up the status quo every couple volumes. Where it's like, your Earth is being destroyed. Okay, uh, Convergence. Uh, okay, you found a new Earth. Oh, no, this Earth is being destroyed, too. Hey, someone from the JSA come to help you out. But now it's canceled, though, because we don't know what we're doing with the JSA, actually. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, George J. Saladin Amid's Exiles canceled too soon. Yeah, how long on this show have we been saying, yo, they should bring back Exiles? What a great concept. They should bring back Exiles. Agreed. Now, Exiles lasted longer than I ever would have imagined back in the day. The, yeah. The, the Amid Exiles. Yeah, I'm I'm shocked. That book should just be a digital series or something. Like, that book should always be around. It really should be, because it's just endless, endless potential. Yeah. As if C. Ed's helping us out. Thank you very much. Will I'm Will I'm Golden, Blue Beetle, and New 52, Static Shock. Uh Every time Blue Beetle's been canceled. Talk about another series that's been canceled. Once originally, yep. when Keith Geffen was right, once in the New 52, once in DC Rebirth. Yep, every every new publishing initiative, uh, some Beetle dies. It's because they're just trying to recapture what Keith Geffen had. Like, here's the thing. Blue Beetle, for like the young, hip hero who tells his parents that he's a superhero and everything else, that stuff that got eaten up by Miss Marvel and by Miles Morales and by Sam Alexander and that whole champion era of characters was basically just doing what Blue Beetle did, but they get to stick around and Blue Beetle doesn't. Yeah, no, it's true. And Static Shock canceled because of all kinds of reasons. Legal reasons, mostly. Yeah, but uh, Static, it, yeah, well, anyone from that world. But Static had a book, so yeah, it's got canceled. Yeah, any any one milestone related, but man, so much money left on the table. I hope they can pick up at some point. I know. Uh, Ty B's finally got to catch you guys live. Just wanted to say you guys are the best and send some love to keep up the good work. Thank you. So you, you too, Ty B's. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I had one last book on here, and okay. I imagine you're, I imagine you're not going to agree with this okay. one. Uh, it's the book that launched James Tynan's career, Talon. Oh yeah, no, I think that book doesn't need to exist. His costume was so cool. Calvin Rose was an actually pretty uh, complex character for that time in the New 52 and that he's like, hey, I was raised as an assassin, but I don't want to kill. I have very solid no kill rules. Sure. Scott, Scott Snyder helped out on like the first five issues. So they actually wrote a bunch of interesting new lore about the Court of Owls and their like rival organization that goes around and tries to save people from like cults and such groups. I'm like, I, that's very clever. This is a cool backstory story it just didn't make it yeah no i i could have told you that <laughs> mm, mm. but uh yeah last time we saw him was a cameo in batman and robin eternal oh, okay oh yeah no that was a while ago 
he showed up for two seconds he's like hey everyone remember me it's talent say hey i remember you talent <laughs> i can imagine batman being like wait you're bad kill like no <laughs> batman wasn't around at that time it was all the sidekicks who saw him yeah uh, and they're like they're, they're okay. like hey you look fun yeah you look you look kind of neat you got a fun design yeah uh, let's put Batwing on there too. Every time Batwing got canceled, either when it was David Zavimbi or when it was Luke Fox. Yeah, Batwing. Again, I thought, another one. I'm like, no. I thought Palmiotti put in some very good work in his two volumes there, being like, okay, what if Batman but Spider-Man problems? Right. Great idea. No, I like that concept. Mm -hmm. um, Brie Larson says, Avengers Endgame or Highlander Endgame? Uh, obviously Highlander, because Endgame, uh, Highlander Endgame was so good. <laughs> Great villains, terrific action, special effects are unbelievable. Uh, totally not misleading trailers. Yeah, no. Um, Highlander Endgame, definitely not totally stupid and a waste of anybody's time. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Roboto, can, uh, maybe, could we get an epic snow flame back versus Batman? <laughs> I'm the human embodiment of cocaine. Oh. Listen, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, hey, listen, go for it. Uh, Tom King, that's his next 12-issue miniseries after Batman. Snowflame. Can we please? Like, uh, South Sun, sad about Robin slash Red Robin cancellation? Any Tim Drake Center book. Yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah. You can thank anyone at the top brass for that. Yeah, can't, get, get, can't buy a book. Poor Tim. No. Uh, Iceman, since Rob's not here, Al Ewing's Ultimates and Ultimates Squared. Great cosmic book. Ewing did some great uh, status quo changing stuff, but no one read it. Um, I'm surprised nobody read it. I remember hearing, I mean, like, Rob really endorsing the book. And Boy, did it he. being, like, so essential to the, like, new Marvel Prime lore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm surprised Marvel didn't, like, kind of back it in any way. But Yeah. yeah. No. Didn't I think that just goes to show their problem with, you know, selling their cosmic universe. They're getting better with it now for Donny Cates. It's like, hey, Donny Cates, you just want to write everything cosmic now? I know. Did you read Silver Surfer? It's great. I did, actually. I did. No, I'm not going to spoil the ending because it just came out today. But there's a character that shows up at the end where I'm like, oh, you naughty boy, Donny Cates. Everything is connected that you write. Yeah, big time. Uh, Joshua Wright, Mockingbird, not because I was a fan, but the circumstances surrounding its cancellation with harassment and vitriol directed at Chelsea yeah. Kane was shameful. Yeah, I wasn't reading it, but, you know, fuck the people who, you know, who I, made such a big deal about that. It wasn't, it wasn't a book for me, so I wouldn't read it. Uh, I remember, like, yeah, no, uh, I'm, I'm shocked that, like, it, it was, I mean, like, here's the thing. I'm sure it was canceled mostly due to sales. Because it's a Mockingbird book, and that's not going to stick around. Exactly. For uh, better or worse. Yeah, and it sucks that, like, anyone would think, lo like, launching harassment at somebody would be a good way to, like, get your book to not... Like, to get, to get a book you were never going to buy in the first place to get canceled. I did read the first issue, though, and I thought it was very fun. She, like, goes into a therapy thing, and we see a bunch of flashbacks. It was, it was very well put together, is mm. the thing, that I really liked about it. Very, very clever in that regard. Right, exactly. Uh, Terror of Death. Uh, hey, with Jonathan Hickman finally back at Marvel, do you think we have a chance for him to do or to finish his Shield book? Yeah, I heard that was the rumor that like that was the sweet plum that they dangled in front of him. It's like, hey, write X Men and we'll let you finish Shield. Yeah, I think he. I think with him at Marvel, there's no way he, they won't finish Shield now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think so. Uh, he also helped us out again and said, "Hey, you missed my super chat." Uh, no, we didn't. There was Just a read lot it. of them. <laughs> Uh, and uh, what's it called? Chris Check says Mark Russell's Flintstones got all that praise, but his far superior press got canceled halfway through his run because it was DCU, and nobody's you, reading DC then. You, you and me, man. You and me, Mark Russell. For like, hey, talk about another series that died on the vine. Although I think it's coming out his uh, his Jesus series there oh, yeah, that, that he died. was writing. That that got canceled due to a bunch of like angry letter writing campaigns. But he's going to get to release it somewhere else though, that's, so that's good. There, do that. Uh, Taylor Petcher, was Hellblazer technically canceled when the original Vertigo run ended? Uh, mm. That I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Uh, I will tell you that every subsequent Hellblazer book was canceled, though. Constantine was canceled. Hellblazer was canceled. Yep. Every every Constantine book has been canceled since Vertigo. They just uh, can't make it work. Yeah, and that's why I, I, I like I said this in the last show. I was like, don't do it anymore. Just stop. Like I know. you'll never be able to do it. Like whatever you, whatever pitch you have for Constantine Hellblazer or those kinds of books, will never beat the people who wrote it. 
you'd think they'd do something with him for Black Label, right? But then again, what is Black Label at the moment? He's in the he's in one of those Black Label books. He's in the Batman Damned book. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot I about that. Well, that's because the book has been delayed so often because of the uh, redrawings that they have to be making him do. Right. Yeah. Michael, There's just just uh, so many penises they had to redraw. I know. There's so much. Um, <laughs> Issue three is just wall to wall dicks they had to get rid of. Yeah, yeah it would make uh, oh, shit. What's his name? H.R. Geiger blush. <laughs> uh, oh geez, if they didn't like that dick shot in issue one, wait till they see the octopus in issue three. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Patterson, Elsewhere Exchange. Uh, it's Else Worlds Exchange. Uh, my favorite El- podcast. Else Warrior Exchange is our travel show. That's right. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, do you think they'll ever do Rogue right? I love her as a character. P- uh, P.S. Go Raptors, Joel. Hey, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, they, they only got to win one more game. Yeah, nice. Um, I love Rogue. I love classic Rogue. Uh, here's a pitch for the MCU. Um, there's this young mutant. She's kind of like on the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, the Avengers deploy their biggest gun, Carol Danvers, at her. She grabs mm-hmm. on. We uh, we get real Rogue, and we depower Carol a little bit so that she can actually like not blow up ships anymore. Interesting pitch. That way you even out the Carol Danvers MCU character and also get Rogue. Just tossing that out there. there that's free. Bit of a twofer. Bit of a twofer. Uh, Mar- Martin Archuleta, uh, Coke Zero. That's what I'm drinking right now. Gotta love it. And now it's all gone. Amartya Acharya, off top, I was so pissed when I heard that Bendis was doing Legion and apparently Batman Beyond. Oh, yeah, a new, a new event, Millennium, which is going to all be about time travel yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that's the last person who should be writing about time travel. Yeah, I, I heard all of that, and I'm like, cool, an event I can skip for once. You can skip it just like everyone skipped the last event the DC had called Millennium. Oh, yeah, that's right. There was another Millennium, wasn't there? Also, everything he's saying, yeah, Batman uh, begins, or, you know, Batman Beyond in the future and Legion. I'm like, oh, no, I'm getting horrible, horrible uh, Future's End flashbacks right now. Yeah. Uh, and John's the one who's trying to get so hard to get the Legion back. I know. It's it's a disaster over there. He's trying to get the JSA back, too, which I think it's funny. It's like, the JSA will return in a Scott Snyder Justice League book. Yeah. Scott Snyder's going to bring back the Justice Society. I did it first. It was me. <laughs> what a horrible idea. <laughs> uh, NG Demigod. Damn, YouTube never sends notifications. Love you guys. Stay amazing. Thank you, NG oh. Demigod. Don't forget to click that bell. Thank you. <laughs> Smash it. Smash yeah, it. Don't smash anything. Just 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 be subscribed and leave some sensible <laughs> comments and we'll all we'll get along just fine. Um But that's it. We're gonna wrap up here, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's all we have to say about those subjects. Uh yeah. listen, if you want to hear us talk some more, go over to patreon.com slash comic pop. Uh I will have the bonus episode up by this evening. Uh so you know the conversation can never stop. Hell yeah. And you can catch up on some of the older shows. It's all it's called one shots. Just check it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, otherwise, I guess that's all for us, right? Indeed. So we'll see you guys next time in another episode of Elseworlds Exchange. Don't forget to check us out here every week, Wednesdays, live, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, also, of course, stay tuned for this channel later on tonight where back issues will be released. And if you can't get enough, then go over to twitch.tv slash TV and watch Tiffany stream video games. She's playing Bloodborne. It's a lot of fun. Nice. We'll see you guys then. I'm Sal. I'm Joel. So long, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.